enlisted in uh, in 1965, and uh, enlisted as an Airman Basic, and then went through Officers Candidate School uh, and uh, a full officers training program and with flight the Air school. Force? Flight school, yes, with the Air Force, and um, spent a uh, total of 26 years active and reserve duty. And I uh, retired my commission in 1991 uh, as a full colonel. My grandmother wore uh, an eagle on her coat uh, during the war, signifying that all of her children, all of her male children, were in the mm. service. And uh, so uh, it, it was, um, I wouldn't say a legacy, but I was uh, brought up to uh, respect uh, the military. Yeah. Well, World War II, uh, as... Uh, my father and my uncles have had stated many times was uh, the last uh, war with uh, real meaning and romance. So was there a little bit of that sense of romance for you as you entered the military? I think initially, mm -hmm. yes. So what were your initial um, responsibilities? I flew C-130 uh, cargo transport planes and we flew, uh, we, we made uh, drops of uh, supplies, uh, ammunition, medical gear, and uh, personnel. And uh, besides dropping uh, airborne personnel, we would deliver non-air-rated uh, troops uh, to various locations around uh, uh, Southeast Asia. On several occasions, uh, we delivered non-airborne marine troops to uh, um, an area that uh, a lot of people remember by the name of Quezon. Mm -hmm. And Quezon was, a, was an outpost where uh, almost every night was overrun by the Viet Cong. And they took tremendous losses there. And the next day we would bring more troops in. Oh. And they had an airstrip adjacent to, uh, to the compound. And we'd, we'd deliver non-airborne troops uh, to fill in for those who were lost in the past. Take Sorry. bodies out when we could. Mm. You were in this position of having to see the cost on a daily basis. Correct. And participate in a way yes. in that cost, help contribute to it in a sense. Yes. How did you, how did you feel about that at the time? How did you deal with that? It was my job. Mm -hmm. It was my job and I, I fulfilled the mission. And. Uh, that's something that I don't know if everyone understands. Uh, uh, you're given a mission. Everyone in the military has a mission to fulfill. Mm -hmm. And you fulfill that mission, or you don't. But uh, in this case, I, I felt that I did. Uh, and uh, uh, in that effort, I, I felt fine about it. Mm -hmm. uh, we seemed to receive uh, support, at least initially, from uh, the administration and the ranking uh, officers. That matters, so, to yes. know that, that you're out there taking risks and helping others take risks, but that there is a support structure that's behind you and uh, encouraging you and looking out for you. Correct, yes. Okay. Did that change at all? Uh, the, the, only, the only question seemed to be, uh, was in, in my mind, is, was were we getting anywhere? Was, this, uh, was the objective being fulfilled? Could the objective be fulfilled? And um, at the time, I don't know that I was ever able to answer that question. I just carried out the missions. I just did my job. I felt, personally felt, not to sound hokey, but I personally felt that my first my job, first and foremost, was to return my crew mm -hmm. alive home. The the camaraderie and the closeness um, became almost a primary, uh, not goal, but um, uh, focus. Yes. And um, that was on a daily basis. Yes. Everybody gets to know everybody else's quirks, idiosyncrasies, and abilities. No place to hide. That's correct. 
and uh, and uh, there's uh, there's no, or should I say, very little uh, margin for error. Mm. And uh, because of that, uh, everybody has to do their job. And in this case, everybody seemed to accomplish that well. Uh, one of our uh, uh, missions to Quezon, we took uh, Marine troops in. And um, unbeknownst to us, uh, the Viet Cong had set up in an adjacent uh, forested area uh, some very heavy uh, ground fire uh, capabilities. So when when we uh, landed on this particular day, we were to pick up uh, several refugees uh, to bring them back to Da Nang for uh, dispersal. These were Vietnamese people who were Correct. in this combat South area. Vietnamese, yeah. They were, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, literally homeless at that mm -hmm. point. And uh, the South Vietnamese government wanted to um, have them in uh, more uh, populated areas so they could um, better take care of them. Yes, be safer and have a life. Well, we uh, unloaded our troops and were loading the uh, refugees up. And we're trying to do that, accomplish that as quickly as we could. And the uh, Viet Cong opened fire on us and uh, with uh, 50 caliber machine guns and so on, a couple of 20 millimeters. And, uh, I had all the engines running at the time. We closed the clamshell in the back, and I didn't even go down to get the wind. I took off with the wind, which you, you, you never do, but uh, um, it was a hastily uh, prepared uh, or an unprepared thing, and it was necessary. So at any rate, uh, we wanted to get airborne as soon as we could. And with maximum power, we just took tremendous hits on mm -hmm. the plane, and I have a, uh, a bullet that was taken out of my my uh, upper shoulder here, and shrapnel from the plane when the bullets came through under my arm, and uh, it was the only, it was the occasion where I lost the only crew member, uh, mm -hmm. our loadmaster, was killed. Um, we, uh, I was uh, approaching Da Nang and I had uh, one engine burning, one was out, and two were turning, and that's exactly how I described our status to the uh, to the uh, tower. And the tower, in turn, told me, "Well, bail out and have your have your crew bail out," because we all had to wear shoots. But there, we had no shoots for the uh, for the refugees, and we had about sixty of them. And I told them that that wouldn't that wasn't a viable. Uh, uh, alternative, and uh, I didn't know if our landing gear would work, but uh, I asked them to phone the runway and have ambulances ready. And uh, so against their judgment, uh, I landed the aircraft. And uh, basically, uh, um, no harm done. As I said, I lost my only crew member uh, of my whole uh, experience, of my whole deployment. And uh, that was devastating yes. for me. That was de I remember it to this day. Yes. Um, none of the refugees were harmed. Uh, that was, to me, an accomplishment. Yes, it sounds uh, like not, a huge Not for me, but, uh, but our crew. And, uh, and my crew took care of these people. And from a personal standpoint, I, I don't agree with the direction that uh, we've taken in, uh, in Iraq. Um, but I can't uh, take that out on those men and women that are putting their lives on the line and literally every day in the, because the way lives are being taken, it's very indiscriminate. Mm -hmm. And I can't, I can't make them a part of my negative feeling toward the overall effort. They're making the effort with their yes. heart and with their soul, and, uh, and I commend them for it. And so, in a sense, do you feel with them in spirit? Absolutely. Yes. Yes.